In a previous video of this series, I showed you how to use the ESP8266 as a web server. The problem with that tutorial was that you had to type the commands yourself every time somebody visited your uh, IP address. So in this video, I want to give you the code so that the server works automatically using an Arduino. So this is a code that I've written and I will be posting a link to it in the description of this video. But uh, basically I created a function called send data that allows you to send commands or any type of bytes of data that you need to your ESP8266. The uh, function send data has three parameters, the command that you want to send or the data, a timeout period so that, uh, for example, if you expect a response within one second, then you can put the timeout here in this uh, parameter. And it also has a Boolean variable called debug and that will print out the response from the ESP8266 if it's set to true. So basically this does what my last video showed you how to do but it does it automatically. It checks whenever there's the uh, IPD string available which means that uh, we have a visitor that wants to see the website and then I have a string called web page where you can put your web page code or your HTML code. I actually have uh, two lines that I'm sending separately and the reason why I want to show you how to send them separately is because the Arduino UART hardware has a limit of 64 bytes that it can send at a time. So if your web page code exceeds 64 characters then you have to create another web page variable or or replace the contents of it with uh, whatever is after those 64 bytes of data and then send it again so this is a code like i said i will be posting a link to it in the description of my video you can get rid of this comment i forgot to get rid of it and uh, one thing that I do want to tell you is that if you're planning to use the Arduino well before I before I tell you let me go ahead and show you how it works so you go ahead and open the serial port window and then it does the uh, initialization so all this output is coming out from the setup function so all of that is a response from these commands so it gives you your IP address and you have to be connected in the same network as the ESP. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to the ESP directly since I configured it as an access point. And now that I'm connected to it, then I can go and visit the IP address on port 80. So as you can see, it's uh, processing the response. So as expected, the output is hello world and two buttons, one that says LED1, the other one says LED2. So you could use those, for example, to control LEDs. But uh, let's go back to what I was saying about using the ESP module as a web page server. And so what I wanted to tell you is that if you're going to do a project where you have to create a user interface and interact with it like I have here with two buttons uh, of course your project might be more complicated but in any case I wouldn't use the ESP to create the interface I would use it to host the data or serve the data uh, in this case for example that would be the state of the LEDs but uh, I would never use it to create a user interface in HTML. Instead, uh, what you can do is you can actually simply write your HTML code and open it from any computer and write it in Notepad or any other text editor. It doesn't have, you don't have to 
serve your user interface from the ESP you can simply create your HTML code and have a uh, have some sort of HTTP request procedure and so that's what I will show you in my next couple of videos I'm going to show you how to control your LEDs from your ESP and so we're going to host the data in the ESP but we're going to create the interface in a separate web page uh, you don't even need a server all you need is your ESP and your Arduino so that's it for this video thank you for watching